one, two, one, two. Welcome to another edition of TK's Two Cents. For those of you who have been tuning in to my Revolution of One live streams, you already know. But for those who haven't, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, I am live right here on Twitter. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, that's when I do TK's Two Cents, where I take a couple of tweets from the week and I give you a couple of thoughts about how to apply those ideas into your life or just giving you some context about what made me wrote that, what made me write that. Uh, if you have comments or questions, feel free to reply to any of my tweets and I like to shout them out and share them. On Wednesdays, The Revolution will be live streamed. That's Kamau and I, uh, usually uh, with a special guest talking about what's going on in the world and how you can take big ideas and boil them down into concrete action steps that you can take to make your life better and to make the world better. Today, I'm excited to talk to you about building versus virtue signaling and also about breaking the cycle of victimization. So let's just dive right in into tweet number one. All right. This is one of my main litmus tests for determining who really cares about you. Are they collaborating with you in some kind of way? Are they having constructive conversations about how you can build together? Are they supporting your efforts to build? All right, let's back up before we dive into this litmus test, why it matters, how to apply it. A couple of weeks ago, I appeared on the Adam Kroll podcast and him and I talked about freedom and liberty and, and, and how to advance those things. And one of the things we talked about is how there are always people doing good work people that are busting their butts to make the world freer. And they're not in the spotlight because the media is not really interested in that. It's not really profitable to focus on those things. There are more sensational, controversial things that make for better headlines. And then there are always people who are front and center in the spotlight, doing a whole lot of hand waving, and they aren't necessarily invested in the communities that they may exploit or use as political talking points or that they may, you know, make themselves out to be the leaders of. And so we talked about this idea of knowing who can you trust? Who can you really trust to know if they're on your side? I wanna, I wanna show you this, uh, this tweet by Adam here uh, because I really like what he said. He said, the more you get to know real people, uh, you realize that there are plenty who post about activism on social in a hit the gym, post the pic, and sit down to chat about the replies kind of way. And there are those who have been helping those in need before and after it's on trend. So, you know, what he's talking about, um, it, it reminds me, I had a conversation on the podcast with uh, Patrice Washington, the money maven, and she was talking about how looking cute ain't the same thing as winning, right? And how there are a lot of people, they go to the gym, they fix themselves up to look really nice. They make sure they take pictures of themselves, you know, like buy a piece of equipment and then they get it on Instagram, you know, because the goal isn't to win in the real world. It's to win on Instagram and make themselves look good. And she says, looking good ain't the same thing as winning. And you got to decide which one of those things you want to do. Well, that doesn't just apply to things like going to the gym or, or making it look like you have a bunch of money. That also applies to social causes. There's a lot of virtue signaling in the world, a lot of ways that we can make ourselves look like we're down for the cause, we're standing in solidarity, all these different types of things. And there's a lot of ways that can be exploited. You know, there's this funny channel on Instagram called, uh, I think it's called Influencers in the Wild. And, and, and there were some posts they shared where you had influencers or whoever these people were, they would go to, to protest, right? And, you know, they make sure they had on their best outfit. And then they have somebody taking a picture of them as they like, you know, like when the crowd walks by, they lean over like, like they're part of the crowd. Like, OK, I got my selfie. I got my picture. Right. And then they go put that on Instagram. Didn't even participate in the protest. Don't even care what the protest is about. They just wanted to show like, hey, look, I'm one of the virtuous ones. I'm one of the virtuous ones. And that's a very easy thing to do. Right. Uh, it doesn't really cost much to to act outraged by the right things, especially when it's fashionable to be outraged by those things or whatever it may be. And this can also happen with many of the leaders and the politicians that we look to to save us, that we look to to guide us. And it is absolutely so important that we develop our ability to look past all the virtue signaling, 
all the hand waving and that we develop a litmus test for knowing who really cares in those scenarios where it's important to have people that care. Because it's all too easy for somebody to be like, hey, I feel your pain. I'm on your side. I feel so bad. But like, you know, having any emotional experience of feeling bad isn't necessarily going to do anything for you or for me. So let's go back to my tweet where I talked about the litmus test, the questions you ought to ask people when you know they position themselves as caring about your struggles, caring about your suffering. Are they collaborating with you in some kind of way? Are they having constructive conversations about how you can build together? Are they supporting your efforts to build? Not are they on TV saying the right things, not are they on social media saying the right things, but are they in your neighborhood? Are they alongside you building? Because there are a lot of people that are great to have a beer with, but not so good to have a battle with. Are these people willing to go to battle with you? Do they have skin in the game? You know, uh, this reminds me of a concept that's talked about a lot in Bitcoin. It's called proof of work. And proof of work refers to the idea that you actually have to invest in the ecosystem. You actually have to burn energy in order to be someone that has sway in the system. And it's the same thing with life. Are people actually burning energy and investing in the ecosystem? Look for evidence of that. Now, I'm not calling for a witch hunt. If, 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 you know, it's not always obvious to know what different projects people are working on and what they're doing. Everybody isn't loud about how they're spending their money and their time and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to your life and you're looking for people to invest in your life or to help you out, or you're trying to determine like, who should I be listening to in terms of figuring out what's best for me? If you don't see any proof of work, if you don't see any evidence that this person actually cares about you as much as they say they care about you, if you don't see evidence that they're involved in your life, in your communities helping you build, then don't be so quick to just blindly trust that this person is your savior, that this person is gonna be there for you, they're gonna help you out. Doesn't mean you need to like go bashing everybody that you, you know, if you can't figure out what it is they're working on, but just don't be so quick to trust people. When it comes to your life, look for people that's actually looking out for you and look to use ideas that are actually useful for you and forget about all the hand waving, forget about all the virtue signaling. Ask yourself, how can I use these ideas to make my life better? And if anybody wants to be in charge of your life, ask yourself, are they next to me going to battle with me or are they just somewhere far off in some luxurious position using my struggles and my suffering to make themselves look good with no real skin in the game. Something to think about. Let's go to the second tweet. Before I do, every Tuesday, every Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern time, TK's two cents, I take a, look, take a couple of tweets and I give you some thoughts about the context behind them, what inspired me to write them, how you might be able to apply the ideas in your own life. All right, tweet number two. While you're, being bu while you're busy being good to people, don't forget that you are one of the people that you need to be good to. Now, this is one of those ideas that sounds like common sense, but as has been often said, common sense isn't so common these days. This kind of sounds like the sort of thing that, oh, no one needs to hear that, right? Wrong. I am someone who is very passionate about individual rights. And one of the, one of the most interesting thing about individual rights is that it's so easy to fight for the individual rights of others without thinking about the individual rights of ourselves. I want to share with you a tweet from my brother BJ Armstrong, not BJ Armstrong. BJ Armstrong is a former Chicago Bull, uh, and I don't even know the brother, uh, but we should watch Last Dance. He was a critical part of the Bulls championships runs. Runs, Not BJ Armstrong. Sorry, brother. BJ Thompson. I got a tweet from BJ Thompson that I want to check out. Uh, you should check out our conversation on the Revolution of One podcast as well. Uh, really fire discussion uh, that's very relevant to a lot of things that's going on in our world today. You are not obligated to be in relationship with anyone who degrades or dehumanizes you. Now, one of the biggest ways that we victimize ourselves is we allow ourselves to buy into narratives that don't really benefit us at all. And we're sold on these narratives by people that 
don't really have our best interest in mind in the moment. I'm going to give you an example from my personal life of this. And it's kind of a funny example because I, I got I to gotta throw my brothers under the bus. And these are my best friends in the world. And I love these guys. But it's a perfect illustration. When I was a kid, one time they roughed me up and um, I started crying. I said, when dad gets home, I'm going to tell dad. And they said to me, like, nah, man, like, like, like you tough. You don't need to tell dad. You're tough. And I'm sitting there crying and I'm like, yeah, that's right. I am tough. I don't need to tell dad. And at, 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 the, at the time, I didn't realize that they were playing me. At the time, they realized something that I didn't realize. And that is, if my dad came home and I told my dad what they did to me, he would bring the heat and he would stand up for me and make sure that justice was served. But they sold me on a narrative. They sold me on a narrative that it would be more noble and more admirable for me to just take what they were doing and to not say anything because that narrative benefited them, right? That narrative kept them out of trouble. It allowed them to keep doing what they were doing without consequence. And sometimes in life, we can allow other people to sell us on a narrative about what we should put up with what we should accept, what we should tolerate in our lives. And sometimes we have the power to use our voice, to use our voices in a way that commands respect, to use our voices in a way that establishes the healthy boundaries that we need to maintain our sanity and to fulfill our potential. And people sell us on a narrative like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Oh, you should just put up with that. Well, this person has been your friend for a long time, or well, this is your this is your cousin, or you, you, you were, you've known each other since you were in the fifth grade. And we buy into these narratives about some duty that we have to put up with toxic energy and total nonsense that we don't deserve that has no place in our lives, and we end up victimizing ourselves. Other people don't even need to victimize us anymore because we bought into a mindset that perpetuates that victimization. And one of the best ways that you can do, one of the best things that you can do to break the cycle of pain and victimization in this world is to break it in your own life by not allowing anyone to sell you on ideas that cause you to victimize yourself. If you have the opportunity to use your voice in a way that establishes boundaries and that commands respect, by all means, use your voice and express your power. You don't owe it to anyone to let them treat you however they want to treat you. But I've known them for a long time, but I don't want to be mean. No matter how much you've known, no matter how long you've known someone, and no matter how much anyone calls you mean for it, you actually have the right to respect yourself and to demand that others do the same. Or as Martin Lawrence say, get to stepping. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get out of here. Hey, y'all, that's TK's Two Cents for the Week. Peace out.